Saskatchewan, a province blessed with abundant natural resources. Agriculture, potash, uranium, even diamonds and helium. And perhaps the most challenging of our natural resources to access are hydrocarbon reserves. Heavy oil along the province's western border, medium and light crude in the southwest and southeast, Bakken and other tight oil reservoirs in the south, and shale gas in the east. The Petroleum Technology Research Centre in Regina, founded in 1998 by the governments of Saskatchewan and Canada. Its purpose? To foster research and development and apply innovative technologies to the field. Its goal? To improve recovery rates and lessen the environmental impacts of hydrocarbon extraction in Saskatchewan. PTRC is providing that bridge between the scientific work and, and the basically knowledge that's being produced in academia and bring it to the industry and implement it in the fields. We look at how oil and gas is recovered in the province and under conventional means we're only producing about 10 percent of the oil that's uh, in the reservoir. That means we could potentially leave 90% of the oil behind. Through enhanced oil recovery techniques such as CO2 injection, hydrocarbon miscible flooding, polymer flooding, water flooding, that number could be doubled or tripled. My objective here is to encourage oil and gas companies, if they try that sort of thing, that through the province and the federal government, we can match their funding. So they're spending 50 cent dollars to de-risk these kinds of recovery mechanisms to improve the overall recovery of their reservoirs. PTRC has been focusing on heavy oil for the past 20 years or so. It is really important to uh, understand that in addition to heavy oil, we have vast resources of light and tight oil that we have to focus on in terms of the long-term value that they have for the province. Certainly make it an important resource to pay attention to. From 2005 to 2009, the PTRC managed field trials of new solvent extraction technologies at Husky, CNRL, and Nexon oil fields. The success of these trials led Husky to build industrial scale solvent vapor projects that have seen 2 million barrels of incremental oil extracted, while reducing greenhouse gas emissions and creating hundreds of new jobs. PTRC is kind of the straw that stirs the drink, I guess you could say. We make it all sort of work together and happen. We have very many different partners. Some are funding, some are just wanting to do research, and each one requires a different type of relationship with us and with each other. And the PTRC fosters those relationships, brings in the funding, and, and puts together the program to hopefully satisfy all of our partners. The Weber Mito Project is a research consortium that was formed in the early 2000s to look at greenhouse gas storage in association with enhanced oil recovery utilizing the CO2 at the Weyburn oil field. Working with the PTRC has allowed us to do research work to engage a lot of the scientists from around the world to, to verify the integrity of, of using CO2 in an oil reservoir to recover oil and also using an oil reservoir to sequester CO2. The operator there is putting CO2 mixed with water down injection wells and what that does do is, is it brings up more oil from the producing wells that are adjacent to it. They have then this sort of alternating pattern of injectors and producers that roll across the field. The end result being getting much larger percentage of oil out of the field. We've produced over 500 million barrels of oil uh, and about 130 million of that has been due to the CO2 flood. So um, we're, we're at about 30% recovery from this reservoir and we've still got another 20, 30 plus years of life ahead of us. We built an incredible body of knowledge on how CO2 in particular moves in a reservoir, how it improves recovery of oil and gas, what its costs are, uh, what are the technical challenges associated with that. 
The examples that we've been able to illustrate in Weber are transferable to other reservoirs in the province. Our monitoring aspects of the Weyburn project was to study if that CO2 would stay where they said it would go. Will it stay there long term for the next 10 years? Will it stay for the next 50? Will it stay for the next 200 years? Aquastor is a pair of wells that is looking at the deep saline underground storage of CO2. While Weyburn Project was looking at putting CO2 to get more oil out, the Aquastor Project is just looking at putting it away forever and not bringing up any more oil with it. Deep saline aquifer storage, as it's called, just seeing if we can store CO2 in the subsurface in large enough quantities to make a difference globally and for a length of time that is significant in the thousands of years. The wells themselves are very deep, 3,400 meters plus. Together they are the first and second deepest wells ever drilled in the province of Saskatchewan. We are approximately three kilometers away from the Boundary Dam power station itself where the CO2 is being captured. In fact, what's interesting is if you were to take the distance from here to the power station and stand it up on end, that would be actually the depth that we're actually injecting the CO2 at. So the distance from this actual injection wells where we're doing the CO2 injection at Aquastore are almost the same distance away from the power plant as the depth underground where we're injecting. What they're doing is, is accessing a storage reservoir called the Deadwood Formation. And this formation is able to suck in fluids like CO2 and store them for an, a very long period of time, very deep and very far away from other commercial applications such as other oil fields or potash mines, very deep and very well stored underground. So where I'm standing right now is actually one of the 13 super stations that are used to measure and monitor the CO2 that's being injected at the Aquastore site. The wells are just kind of over here to my uh, right and they're injecting the CO2 to a depth of about uh, 3400 meters. What we have here are the most advanced technologies that uh, can be applied to make sure that the CO2 is staying in place. We actually have one of three water measurement ports where we can sample the water at different depths to make sure that no CO2 is escaping uh, from deeper down in the ground. We also have other kinds of measurement monitoring devices here. We have soil gas sampling ports, which you can't see, but which are buried here, in which we uncover and take soil gas samples just to make sure that the soil is also not being affected by the CO2 that's being injected. And behind me are uh, different kinds of monitoring devices that measure for upward shift and sideways shift, just in case the CO2 is causing the ground to lift. And finally, just a bit further back, way behind me, is a air monitoring uh, device, which is checking to make sure that no CO2 is escaping from the injection well and entering the air around the area. And of course, in three years of monitoring, since we started the Aquastore uh, injection, we have not experienced anything that would indicate in any way a leak of CO2 to any of these uh, particular locations. You are looking at the application of these technologies that have been worked on over the last 20 years. From injecting of CO2 that is captured from a carbon capture facility into a saline reservoir that will stay there forever. We will understand the trapping mechanism. We will understand how it moves through the reservoir. We will understand how the surface is affected by injecting into, into this deep reservoir. The goal of Aquastore is to demonstrate not only that saline aquifer storage of CO2 is a viable alternative for GHG mitigation, but that it can be done safely and inexpensively. Because we have all of these different monitoring systems at Aquastore, we are able to then choose the best ones and the most cost-effective ones if this technology is to be rolled out throughout Canada, North America and indeed the world. The future of the PTRC lies in the strengths of its research and the continuing need for world technologies to help increase oil production and mitigate greenhouse gases in an environmentally friendly way as possible. The future is finding the balance of the investment of technology with the cost of that technology and the value proposition that they will make. Pipeline and flow line integrity is an area that we haven't been involved in in the past, but we think that there is an opportunity for PTRC to support that kind of thing. 
Another very important area is AI, artificial intelligence. How can PTRC support industry as they look at improving ways to do their business, monitor their business, make their business more efficient? And what kind of technology should we be applying and investing in to help reduce greenhouse gas emissions? Since 1998, the PTRC has successfully met the challenge to find new ways to foster innovative technologies for the petroleum industry. The work continues. We sit on a very vast resource and we're in competition with the Saudi Arabias, with the, the Permian Basin in Texas, with uh, the Bakken in North Dakota. We recognize that we have to be as efficient, if not more efficient. We have to be more cost effective all at the same time generating revenue that can be used to support looking at and developing renewables for the future.